everybody welcome back to today's arrow 46 video and today we're going to be looking at the second greek word and if you know about the second greek word we've already talked about in the first what the first topic when we started talking about the three greek words but before you jump in and you haven't watched the first greek word we go watch that before you watch this one so if now you've watched the first one, let's jump right into the second Greek word topic for today. So first of all, we know that this this topic about the three Greek words about is also to, is talking about Jesus Christ's second coming. As we know, it talks about Jesus Christ's second coming. But I said coming. Is that right? No, it's presence in Jesus Christ's second coming presence which these three words try to help us understand about Jesus Christ's second presence. So let's jump right in though to the second Greek word first of all. So first of all this word means a manifestation the second Greek word. Then it means demonstration and then the word manifestation means demonstration and then demonstration means bright shining or appearing. But we know this word is a Greek word that is used in prophecies, but it does not designate anything in particular about J Lord's Purusha in time, but only the manner in it which may indirectly indicate to us about the time. But actually, it is actually clarifying to us the fact about the manifestation of the Christ's parousia, sorry, in it and its progression. Yeah, and its progression. This is what the word is used for. So now, we first need to understand though, the word epiphenia itself is the, the truth about it. It is not used in scriptures to explain a particular time period, like the word parousia. And we know the Purusha is Jesus Christ's second Purusha. So when Jesus Christ's second Purusha happened, this is when God's plan is happening. And I just said that about Epiphania is not a particular time period. Like that, after Jesus Christ's second Purusha happened, after the Purusha, then it's the next stage, which is actually Epiphania. And Epiphania is a stage. And when the Epiphania stage happens, this is when the God's children start to understand and they're clarified by the signs and the prophecies given by God since it starts to brighten up in them and shine. And why they say this is a good example for us now to talk about. So the first example about this is that, so let's say we have a sun and at three o'clock in the midnight, the sun is not being able to see. So this is the time when the God children or anyone has not understood the prophecies and signs are con and are confused. And then, here the next part is, we need to understand here, is at the 12 o'clock though it is, that when it happens, that at 12 o'clock, yeah, but at 12 o'clock the sun will be really bright and shining though comparing it to 3 o'clock when we see at 3 o'clock and 12 o'clock the sun will be at different brightening but at 12 o'clock this is when the epiphenia stages happened they've started to get clarified and they've started to understand the prophecies and signs here so now we've understood most about epiphenia now about it being a stage and not a particular time period like Perusia. Next, Epiphany has actually been said six times only in the Bible in verses. So let's say those verses now. The first verse, 2 Thessalonians second chapter 8 verse, 1 first Timothy 6 chapter 14 verse, 2 Timothy 1st chapter 10th verse, 2 Timothy 1st chapter 1st and 2nd verse, and 2 Timothy 4th chapter 8th verse, and, first Timo and F Titus 2nd chapter 13th verse. So these are the verse, six verses that talk about Epiphania or relating to Epiphania. So now we're going to read one of those verses. Well, we're going to read 2 Thessalonians 2nd chapter 8th verse. So let's get the verse right now. So... 
Okay, so Second Thessalonians, second chapter, eighth verse. So, and then the lawless one will be revealed whom the Lord will overthrow the breath of his mouth and destroy by the splendor of his coming. Okay. So we can understand the word epiphenia is actually been translated here as brightness. But the word is also translated, as we said at the start, in different translations as manifestation or appearing. But as a slight recap from last week's lesson, or well session, or well video, we saw the word coming. And if you heard the verse clearly, at the last word it said coming. So this suggests, this is mistranslated the word parousia instead of presence, but as coming. So now, so now we're going to conclude with a slight recap of last week and this week.